Drew, you're a firm believer in developing the talent that you have. Why are you such a firm believer in recruiting the guys you have and developing them to the best athletes they can be? Because, uh, I mean, well, at Northwestern, obviously, you know, we have some uh, different hurdles. You know, our guys have to be uh, extremely intelligent. You know, obviously getting into school is the first, uh, the first ingredient in that. Um, and then, you know, you, you bring a kid in, you know, I bring up Brandon Preason, who is there today. Um, he's a two-time state champ, and yet he came to us and, you know, he had some techniques that he was very good at, and he was, you know, a little limited in, in other areas. And now he's just, uh, he's a complete wrestler, you know. He's taken third in the country. You know, he's very ready to be a, a national champ. A lot of hard work on his end and then being coachable uh, and never giving up on him, you know. He lost some tight matches freshman year where we couldn't, we couldn't get our offense going. And uh, we're not going to give up on a kid like that. We're going to take him back in the room fine-tune things, watch video, uh, you know, get him to where he needs to go in the spring, whether that's overtime, you know, train in the, in the spring and stay with him, you know, 12 months a year the whole time, never give up on him. Um, we're not going to always get, uh, you know, Jake Herberts. Uh, we like him when we get him, but even Jake, he was, uh, he was recruited over when he came to Northwestern. He wasn't and on some people's radar, he wasn't the number one kid at his weight in Pennsylvania. Okay, so there was other programs that chose another guy over him. Northwestern got Herbert. Uh, you know, he he basically uh, he hasn't disappointed anybody. He's developed a lot. Look at his freestyle. You know, his freestyle two years ago was good. Now he's on the world team. You know, it's important to stick with your guys the whole time. You talk about Brandon Preason and his coachability and the things that you worked on with him. Do you think that the loss to Robles and then coming back and beating him for third and fourth shows just how coachable he is? Yeah, I mean, we we, uh, we had a game plan the first time. That kid's so so awkward to wrestle and so talented, so strong. Um, he's like nobody you've ever wrestled. You know, Brandon talked about it. Um, you sit down, you get off of, you know, coming back through the backside of the tournament. You beat a national champ. 45 minutes before, then we sit down with them, we're talking, you know, strategy, you know, uh, how, how do you wrestle this kid, you know, your choices in the second, third period are very important when you're wrestling him. Um, he can take you out of your match strategy really quickly. And in those 45 minutes from, from wrestling uh, Escobedo to wrestling uh, Robles, we were able to get a game plan together and he was able to bring that to the table. and got that win, you know, after uh, after a tough quarterfinal match. What would you contribute uh, Jake Herbert's improvement in freestyle to? Um, you know, once again, he, he's very, very good, but he's also coachable. Um, you know, that year off, he spent a lot of time at overtime with Bormet and those guys. He traveled overseas, um, did well overseas, took third at, at the University World Championships for the second time now. Didn't have a good U.S. Open, didn't have a, a good Olympic trials. I mean, you can ask him. He would tell you exactly that. This year, he comes back into our system, really, wrestles every day, has two weeks off, basically, from NCAA. It's not off, but two weeks where he's not in the room every single, every single second. Trains at Northwestern, trains at overtime, wins the Open for the first time in his career, you know, wins the OW at the Open, then trains more, wins the World Team Trials. He was relaxed. He was confident. You know, we we like to make our uh, make our guys at ease when they wrestle. You know, we at NCAs, we're the guys in the back the entire time. Okay, we stay with them the whole time. We don't care about whatever else is going on. People always ask me, "Did you see that match? That quarterfinal match?" I'm like, "No, I didn't. I don't know. Unless we're scouting the other guy." We're in the back with our guys, and uh, we were in the back with Herbert. People are like, you know, everybody's thinking there's no way, you know, he could he could ever lose. You don't know that, you know, you can't be that overconfident. So we were back there with him, keeping him loose. I mean, you even saw it on Flow Wrestling. It was on there, a little segment. He was back there. I think he was even talking to Mike before the, before the match. So 
why is it so important to keep your guys loose like that and, and maybe not be out watching, you know, Caldwell versus Metcalf yeah. or whatever it may be? Why is that so important to you? It's a, it's a high pressure situation, you know. There's a, not only the pressure you put on yourself, the pressure from having friends and family, boosters in the crowd, alumni, uh, you know, people that have known you since high school, before high school, ESPN, all that stuff. Everybody's watching you. It's just you and that other guy. And basically, uh, you have to be able to adapt at a moment's notice and be, uh, be relaxed before you go out there. You go out there all amped up. I think you've seen what has happened recently when guys are too, too amped up when they go out there. You need to be relaxed. Great warm-up. Take, take a little time for yourself. You know, sit in the hallway, focus, then go out there and unleash it. And that's what Herbert does. He unleashes. Okay, you talk about sticking with your athletes. Is it bad when programs don't recruit for depth but recruit to replace guys who may not be getting the job done? Yeah, our guys are <laughs> our guys are real intelligent. So they know, you know, uh, if you're if you're trying to recruit over or, or do all that stuff that that you see a lot of times in programs, you got to stick with your guy. Um, you got to make sure that he feels confident at home. Um, you know, when you don't, there's uh, there's definitely situations where guys are going to transfer. Uh, guys are going to um, make poor decisions. You know, make knee-jerk decisions that they don't feel they're getting enough from their from their staff or from the school itself. And uh, you know, you gotta you, you gotta notice when the guys are having a, a rough go of it. You know, and uh, maybe that's a good time to uh, talk to them. You know, take them out of the wrestling room, bring them in the office, talk to them, and, and talk through it. You know, and uh, if you don't stick with your guys, you're you're not going to have a lot of stability as you try to move forward and produce national champs. Is your guys' reign, you're, you guys have had a phenomenal run, you've had a national champ, uh, or somebody in the finals the last four years in a row? Right. Okay, is this run over, or you guys, are you going to continue to build? Yeah, it's not over, it's, uh, it's a challenge. Um, you know, you lose guys like uh, uh, Lang, Tamlo, Fox, Herbert, um, Velez, you know, all these guys that were a big part of the program and, and a three-time qualifier like Hayes. But then you look at the young guys, you know, the the you know, Preason's got another year, Salzer's got two years, you know, Welsh has got three years. Um, you know, our upperweights are we're all freshmen last year. Um, you know, Roddy's just coming in next year as a freshman. You you, you reload, you know, and uh, you might not uh, you know, you might not win every dual meet, but that's not what it's about. It's about you know, setting the stage for the NCAA championships and making sure that your guys feel they have everything they need to win an NCAA title.